Jim Vision. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me, man. It's amazing. We had a good week last week doing the Transformers and stuff. Like, amazing working with you and Matilda. Thanks and very much, man. Went great, like. Well, um, you know, we, when we got the project uh, for Transformers, they were like, where do you want to paint it? And I said, well, there's three places, Cardiff, London, or Manchester. Uh, and incredibly, they were like, okay, let's do it in Cardiff. I was like, brilliant. Uh, and, you know, it was really important for us to work with local artists. And so it was great to get you and Carl involved. Uh, and of course, Armour is like, he's like the paint master, isn't he? He's like a wizard. Yeah. You know, he's like, uh, you know, I've always looked up to him. So it's great to get him involved. Yeah. He's uh, he's our godfather. He is you know? graph godfather, isn't he? Yeah. And obviously, like, you know, the type of work he's doing now doesn't really pay homage to how much he, how real he is and how, uh, like his roots in graffiti because. Yeah. I've seen him go all city, track sides, mm -hmm. and he's just, he's a proper representation of natural progression. You start with tagging and you work your way up, and now he's like, where he's at. Well, he's just like, he's got this kind of pure talent, which I think, you know, you can't even learn it. It's just got to be in you, isn't it? It just comes out of you naturally. Yeah. I've always tried copying everything he's done, and I've never quite succeeded. <laughs> he's just, it's just that one little thing he's got. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I think Wales has got some of the best artists in the world. You know, it's like if if only we could just get a bit more attention to Wales and kind of really build up the next generation and kind of sh you know just show how incredible artists are from Wales. You know, definitely, yeah, needs to be done. Don't it? it needs to be done. So, like all good podcasts, let's start at the beginning. Where were you born? Where were you brought up? Uh, I was born in, uh, born in the uh, Caerphilly Mining Hospital, and I grew up in Barry Island, uh, just down the road. And then we moved to Panath. And about 20 years ago, I moved to Bow. And then I lived in Shoreditch and uh, Whitechapel. So, you know, I kind of, I think I decided that I just couldn't make it in Wales as an artist. I was just getting so much abuse and so much bullying trying to be an artist. I was like, I'm just going to go and break away from this and try something in a big city. Uh, and I think it was like the best decision that I could have made because there was just so many opportunities, so much possibilities. Uh, and now that I've kind of made, I've done all the things that I wanted to do in my career. I've worked for Marvel, I've worked for Transformers, I've worked for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, all the stuff that I loved when I was a kid. Now I kind of really want to bring it back to Wales and see if I can help or do anything really powerful in Wales. Yeah, sick. Be nice to have you and have your energy put it's, into the scene. Isn't it is, and it's just putting energy in the right places and like doing good stuff uh, and supporting what's here already. You know, I'm not trying to like reinvent anything i just want to support what's already happening yeah amazing so like at what po like at what points or what stage in your life did you actually like like had you, had you just like left like uni or something and then you moved to that's right i did a i did a foundation in lander yeah uh which was actually incredible because it really kind of showed me all of the possibilities in art you know like you've got all of these options and you just have to figure out what you want to do um, and I kind of decided I wanted to do video because obviously I was love you know, I love uh, movies and animation and all of that stuff. So I was like, maybe I can go and make a career in the movies. And when I got to London, thinking, oh yeah, this is I'll just like turn up and all these things will happen. That didn't happen. Like I was literally unemployed for like two or three years. Or the jobs that I did get, it was like fifty quid a day, and you can't survive like that. You know, if, if you got money behind you and you've got like a trust fund you can do that all day but if you're trying to survive and you're trying to pay your rent like you're just going to be screwed doing that so um luckily I was doing a bit of graffiti and street art on the side and people started paying me for that so I was like hang on a minute you know I'm not getting paid to do any of this film stuff but I'm getting paid to paint stuff so I kind of switched my attention and kind of just started doing the stuff that I loved. How do you start graphing? Well I think uh so in art class in a, in about year four or five my art teacher gave me a, a star wars book and i kind of just read it cover to cover and i was just like what is this i'd never seen anything like this you know in wales i think you're a bit cough you don't really see all of the stuff that's out there so i was i was a little bit obsessed you know i was just like reading it and i was copying it and i was doing all that stuff and then going out in the back lanes and just doing really terrible graffiti and i think for a while i was just like no i'm not good at this so i just kind of stopped and where were you where were you living then when you Started when this was just like in Panaf. In Panaf, so like maybe I would have like bloody seen some of that. Like, well, definitely. But like I say, it was just in the back lanes. And yeah, it was terrible. It was with really shoddy car paint. Like the tags looked terrible, and I was kind of embarrassed. <laughs> and then 
when I went to London and you kind of just see all of this stuff, you'd literally see like four pieces and wild stars and you're just like, oh shit, like this is, this is what we can do. Yeah, this is why I thought like the podcast for you would be kind of important because obviously like I've known of you from like meeting the styles and right. everything that you've put into graffiti. But like I bet you like because like I was amazed to hear that you, like you, you like lived in Barry, you come from Barry, lived in Panath, right. and then like obviously because I just thought you, I thought you were a London writer, <laughs> London artist. Well, I, you know, I got pretty embedded in London. You know, I made loads of power moves. I did loads of festivals and events and exhibitions. I worked hard to build up a reputation. Uh, and obviously I kind of had to leave Wales behind and I didn't build up that reputation in Wales. Yeah, so you've started Graph now in the back lanes and you yeah, know, yeah. growing up and then so what? Then you went to university and then you've made the move to London now. That's right. So I ended up in Bow. I don't know if you know Bow. Yeah. Bow's like where, um, you know, uh, Dizzy Rascal, all those guys come from. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was pretty bleak. I would say I had a, a couple of really bleak years, just not having any money, you know, not really even able to go out or enjoy myself or do anything. I couldn't buy any paint, so I kind of had to survive however I could. Uh, <clears throat> and, you know, luckily Shoreditch was on the doorstep. Like, literally, as long as I could get to Shoreditch, I could see all of this amazing art that was happening. So it was kind of like 2003, 2004, and this was like the era of Banksy. This is like when he first started arriving in London, doing exhibitions. Uh, and, you know, there was a buzz. It was exciting. It was like street art had taken over. I wouldn't say Graph was really that big. You know, for me, I couldn't see it. it. There didn't seem to be like the same community, but the street art community was massive and there was loads of people from other countries coming and doing stuff. You had like the London Police, you had D-Face, Banksy. <clears throat> ben Ayn. Ben Ayn. They were all smashing it, all taking over the walls. And, you know, I guess that's what inspired me to kind of just keep doing what I'm doing. Um, and then I managed to meet people like Inky and... Uh, Chew and Snug, wow. all of those incredible artists, incredible. and they really kind of just opened my horizons. You know, this is possible. This is what we can do. Yeah, um, and those guys are all total style masters. So, you know, it was like great inspiration. Chew was unbelievable. Wasn't he? Chew's still in- incredible. Like he's probably one of the best artists of our generation. He probably doesn't get enough credit, but he's incredible. No, he doesn't get enough credit. So, what kind of what's Chew doing now? Do you know? I think he's down in Margate. Yeah, yeah. I think like London. Unfortunately, London is like a bit of a toxic place for artists. Like, you really have to hustle so hard. And I think sometimes you just have to just leave and just get the fuck out. Yeah, Margate is like uh, it's like shortage, but by the sea. Yeah, London's got that. <clears throat> Especially if you're going there to write. It's just got that. As soon as you enter it, it's got that feeling that just comes over you, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you, you when you're... When you're painting there, you just got to understand that nobody really is looking out for you. You kind of got to look after yourself. Yeah. Uh, and you're going to have all of this stuff kind of coming at you and you just got to be prepared and you just got to decide which way you're going to go and what you're going to do. Yeah. You know, I've been there writing and there for other reasons, doing floors and stuff with Cam and going out bombing in the night then and then just getting like Instagram messages saying, I'm going to get you. And oh, yes. Like, what? <laughs> came what? And um, when you're actually there, it's quite daunting. Like, you know, it's like, I'm not particularly scared, but it's like... It's a big city. It's massive. Yeah, it's, it's on you. And you, you and you don't really realise it until you leave. What, what you've just been through. Like, yeah, that yeah. weight that comes off your back when you actually leave it. Like. Yeah, man. But there's also like, you know, a scene in London where you can just go and chill and it's like... You just want to be that guy that paints like the Hall of Fames and... Oh, yeah. And... I mean, I think, uh, you know, graffiti as well as being, you know, kind of like a doggy dog world, it's also like a place of community. It's a place where people get together and hang out and paint. Uh, so I think it's really important that people find those communities, find your people. And that I didn't find my people in Wales. I think that's the thing when I was younger because I felt like uh, nobody really respected art. And so I was just like, yeah, I want to be an artist. And they're like, what are you going to be an artist for? I mean, what, you're just going to be poor for the rest of your life? And I'm like, look, this is what I want to do. I want to be an artist. And when I got to London, I found other people who also wanted to be art, uh, artists. So I feel like when you get when you get into the scene and you really find your people, then it's like an incredible place to be. What kind of people did you 
Well, okay, so I, I met a guy called Tizer, which you probably know. Yeah, I know Tizer. He's like a, he's a pretty incredible artist, and he's just an all-round good guy. Amazing guy. Yeah, so I think, you know, Tizer for me was just like one of my best mates, and, you know, we painted loads of walls, we did loads of commissions, and we just got organized, you know, we, we, we hustled really hard, and we made shit happen, and we kind of survived in London, where most people, you know, kind of struggle, we kind of, we thrived. So I met Tizer at the Dragon Bar, that's... So the Dragon Bar for us in that era, 2005, that was like a place where the toilets were tagged to shit. You know, everything was about people expressing themselves and drinking beer and hanging out. And uh, we decided to start doing exhibitions there and kind of bring the community together. So we were doing these kind of joint group shows and we were kind of picking all of these different people and trying to bring them to one place and everyone put in their art. And we were able to invite people like Inky and Aztec and, you know, all of these like really big names, really incredible artists. And they were like, yeah, sure, I'll give you some artwork. So for us, it was amazing. This was like a chance for, you know, all of the community to come together. We got loads of free beer from Tiger Beer and we just got everyone drunk. And I feel like that was like, the, for us, that was the, the early part of our career, you know, the formative years where we really got to figure out who everybody was. And everyone kind of knew everybody, and it was a social kind of scene. <clears throat> and so Dragon Bar for us was like really pivotal. It was in the middle of everything that we were doing. Yeah. Sounds amazing. It was amazing. And, yeah. you know, it would never be replicated. You know, within like 10 years, the place had gone, had been knocked down for flats. They moved to another place, and you couldn't tag on the toilets. So it's like, if you can't tag on the toilets, graphite aren't going to be there because they're just going to be getting in trouble all the time. So we had to start finding new places, and that's when we set up Rockwell House, and that was a place where we could have a place where we could do what the fuck we wanted. You know, we could have toilets covered in graph, and we could have a rooftop bar, and we could do all that stuff. Yeah. Same as us in Cardiff, like, you know, like, we all socialise together. You know, we don't really socialise with anybody else. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't got graph in the toilets, we ain't going to drink in your bar, like. Yeah, just, well, you will have graph in your toilets. Oh, you, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, like, Literally, you come out of like Woman B and uh, Key Street, mm -hmm. take a right. The very first club in there is, and you see is Kongs. They won't let us in there. No, really? No. <laughs> yeah, because we just bombed the shit out of it a few times. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, not being disrespectful, but it's like kind of all we like to do. It's all we wanted to look. Yeah. And we don't feel like, okay, it's like, yeah, it's a bit of criminal damage, but now nah, we're adding it's, some culture to this. It looks better than a clean toilet. Yeah. Or, it, you know, it looks better than, you know, some. You know, amateur graffiti. So why don't you just let the professionals do what they do? Yeah. Yeah, so where did you progress from then, then, after the Dragon Bar and stuff? Uh, so we were hustling really hard. You know, we were really trying to, like, survive in London. We were trying to earn some money, pay the rent. The rents are crazy, and just living in it, just existing is difficult. We had loads of... Uh, we, every Thursday we had, like, Art Thursday, and they would give out free drinks. So we kind of just figured out that that was the day that we were going to socialize with all our mates and we'd end up going to exhibitions and everyone kind of met up at these free beer dr drinking events uh, and art on the side. And then uh, in about 2008, we decided we were going to... Wait, well, I'll rewind a little bit because at the same time, I started traveling and going to different jams around the world. So I went to a place called Wiesbaden where they have the Meeting of Stars event. Yeah. Have you ever been there? I haven't been there. You've got to go there. It's amazing. And Is that the one where Ecto and... Did that big green, the, the massive one? Sure, that, I'm not sure which one they did. Yeah. Is it I think so, yeah. So, yeah, it's it's an incredible spot. It's like literally either side of a massive train line. they got all these walls and, uh, you know, the Germans are organized. You know, they really yeah. get their shit together. These guys were like doing these incredible productions, which I'd never really seen productions like that in London. Like, <clears throat> I feel like British artists, for some reason, they just do their piece next to each other. They don't work together, don't do, don't figure out the background, don't do the characters. The Germans were literally just on it. They were literally making the most incredible production. Everyone had the same colors. And this is in part because Meeting Styles is really well organized. Uh, so I kind of took that idea back to London. And I was just like, guys, come on, we got to start doing these organized productions. Uh, and it was it's a struggle. You know, it's hard to convince. Hey, everyone, let's go on the same page. And let's, let's do the same color scheme or let's do a it thing is. or whatever it is. Um, so I said, well, we're going to just have to start organizing our own meeting of styles because every country has their own one. So let's do one for the UK. And I think there'd been some in the in Liverpool in the past, but it kind of died. So it's like, right, let's bring it back and let's make it happen again. So 
started organizing meeting of styles. We started bringing people from all over the, the world to come and paint with us. Uh, it kind of like stirs the pot, doesn't it? It kind of keeps it interesting. Yeah. When you have people with different styles and they all kind of turn up and suddenly that whole street just got graphed in one day. Mm. So we had, uh, yeah, we had, I think. A... <clears throat> yeah. So I, I don't know if you've seen the trains on top of the building in Shoreditch. It's a place called Village Underground. Right. Uh, and we managed to get the massive big wall on the outside and we turned it into a huge graft production. We literally had about 10 or 15 artists and we painted the trains and, you know, it really was like very, very early stages. We hadn't figured anything out. We didn't know how to do events. We didn't know how to do that shit. We, uh, we had some paint sponsorship, which of course didn't turn up till the week after the event. <laughs> but it's just all of the stuff that happens when you're doing this stuff. Yeah. So we ended up having to buy the paint anyway, and then all of this paint turned up, and it was sabotage. I think if you ever used sabotage, no, it's like a Greek paint, and it's probably the worst paint you've ever smelt. It's just literally like cat piss. Ties are always jokes about it. It's like you still got yellow sabotage in your paint cupboard. <laughs> like I've just got one can for head, and I bring yeah. it to every job. And he's like, "What is this? Why have you got that, man?" Yeah. So. You know, we, we started from like really humble beginnings and we kind of turned it into a pretty massive jam. Yeah. You know, we managed to get sponsorship from different um, companies like Red Bull and Relentless. And we literally were able just to keep making the jam bigger and bigger. And I think, you know, it probably is the biggest jam in London. And I, you know, I think that's that's fair to say. But we're not really like trying to make it the biggest jam. It's just like naturally needed to be bigger because there's loads of people who want to paint and loads of people who should be in, involved. It just meant we were able to bring loads of different people from different places up together. Yeah, I come out, come out the one year, I didn't, didn't paint. You didn't paint? No. no. Didn't paint, but like, we come to see you in the Nomadic Gardens. And, That's right, come to check out what we're doing. Yeah, you gave me like a pass and we ate for free and yeah. drank some beer and shit, so <laughs> yeah, it was a good day. I, I painted in the lane then, Yeah. but then like, um, he was like half hour later, so I'm like looking at my piece like through the, the fence in the Nomadic Gardens. I see it's this guy rock up and this uh, zombie. Oh, yeah. And he just starts painting over the top of me. I'm like, yo. And I'm like, what are you writing? He's like, my name. I'm like, yeah, what's your name? He's like, zombie. I was like, all right. And Fair enough. No problem. <laughs> like, looks like I was scared, but, you know, big, isn't he? Yeah. It's, well, it's his street, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So, welcome after meeting the stars. Then I'll do. Well, I mean, we've done 10 years of meeting stars, or we've done nine years, and we've got one, one more to make it 10. Yeah, uh, and then we, you know, COVID happened, and we had a baby. So you know, I think your priorities change, don't they? When when you have kids, yeah, and kind of we decided it'd be more important to look after our kid, me and Matilda, who um, also organises meeting styles. It's more important to bring up that child, give it the best life possible. Because when you organise these events, it kind of takes over for a yeah. few months. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we'd still love to do it again, and we were talking about. You know, if we're going to do meeting stars again, what are we going to do? And it's like, well, what we'd love to do is like a, a Wales, England, Ireland, Scotland meeting of styles and like tour it around to go to all the different spots. You know, it's such a great concept, bringing people together. Four nations. Like. Exactly. Because, you know, we're, we're multiple countries here. We're not just one country. So what would you do? You'd have like um, the same people from each country go around to each country. Well, I think like in each place, you know, whoever turns up. Well, so you'd have like all the Welsh boys doing a Welsh meeting of styles and then the Irish boys doing. And like just invite a few guys down and kind of, you know, it's making it interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Like, yeah. So that's on the cards then, do you think? I mean, I think so. I've spoken to the organisers. Yeah, spoken to them well in Germany. But obviously it's just such a massive production. It's like, it's a big idea. Yeah. So can we go back to like, what's it? So what, what would you like clash yourself as now? Like if you wanted to clash... If you if you want to clash yourself, like would you? Well, I mean, I think I always consider myself a painter. Yeah. So I'm a, pa a big wall painter. That's how I class myself. And you know, I've got roots in graffiti. I love street art and comic books. And uh, you know, I'm I'm trying to like just do something different. I'm not trying to follow any course. I'm not like trying to follow anybody or you know do what anyone else has done. I'm trying to make my own course through life. What's it? Can we go back to like what's it like being an artist in London? How yeah. how? Well, I mean, I think being an artist in London is like probably one of the most difficult things you could be, because you don't have any money and nobody wants to give you any credit, and you know you kind of have to take everything that you get. You're not going to get given anything. Nobody's going to do it for you. Like everything has to be totally self motivated. 
Um, and I think there's a lot more opportunities because people appreciate it. But at the same time, nobody appreciates anybody else. Like, it's a very kind of, it's a strange world. You know, lots of people are like, oh, yeah, that looks great. But nobody wants to put their hands in their pocket and support you and give you, you know, buy your artwork or. Yeah. So it's a struggle. It's, it's a challenge. How are you finding it now? Where have you got like a studio or anything? Well, like unfortunately, we lost our studio. You know, we built up this beautiful big studio in uh, called Rockwell House. We had four in our studios that we were renting out to different artists. And uh, we had a photography studio we could rent out for different photo shoots. And after five years, unfortunately, the landlord was like, right, get the fuck out. We're going to knock this down. And we're going to build a skyscraper. So uh, from that point onwards, we t we haven't really had a studio. Uh, and we've just been kind of, you know, working our way through things. It's too expensive. You know, the, the landlords want too much money. And I'm not really prepared to give it to them. Well, artists, um, do you think, uh, really pushing the boundaries in London at the moment? London. Or well, the UK then? Well, I mean, you know, London and the UK, these are, you know, it's a big difference, isn't it? It's, um, in London, you've got a guy called Stocky at the moment who's totally smashing everything. He's paying almost every day. I see him all the time. He's doing everything. Um, what kind of, what kind of work is he doing? Like traditional graph or? He does a bit of graph, but he's mainly doing like these big colorful kind of compositions. Uh, he has loads of color, loads of black out, oh, black outlines. Um, in the UK, who's good in the UK? I mean, there's, it, it's, it's such a big, broad location, isn't it? There's so many people in so many cities. And I feel like everybody's representing in each of their cities really well. I think, like, at the moment, we're seeing the best artists of the best generation. You know, I feel like anyone who's not good at this stuff is kind of dropping off and falling by the wayside. You really have to work hard if you're going to survive. Yeah. Um, what about you? Who do you think is smashing it? Me? You're smashing it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just a little... I'm a small fish in a small pond, man. But... um I don't know, I just love the UPC boy stuff. The, yeah, okay, so I mean, I, you have to mention South End because I would say South End yeah. at the moment is without doubt the best jam that's happening in the UK. Yeah. And Hector and Stir have put on probably the best jam that I've seen uh, this country produce. You know, from the amount of amazing eyes that they had, to the size of their walls, you know, the fact that they built all of that space for these people to paint is incredible. And it's in the city centre as well. It's not like in a car park over there or it's not like you know tucked away it's literally smack bang in the middle of South End yeah um, so fair play those guys have smashed yeah like I just just rate them at the top these days to be honest and at the moment in the UK like with the jam uh, the, like, you, like you said the way they go about doing their things like it's the yeah. extra mile in it they're working so hard and you can see that you know it's really paying off uh, and like something like that could never happen in London because we would never get the funding we would never get the space and uh, they've done an incredible thing in South End, and they've got the funding and they've got the space and they just have to keep growing it keep making that jam better yeah it's amazing and like just like the UPC boys like painting wise as well just without the jam like they're just smashing it just incredible like yeah. and uh, seen them down in South End a couple of years ago but then I seen them up in Leicester for being the paint they just so humble and down to earth and mm -hmm. It's great, like, you know, bought the book, Ecto's book, and that was just, like, mind-blowing. It's just full, full of bangers. It's unbelievable, like, I just, like, you know he's obviously got, like, a a big catalogue, but you just don't realise how much do you, and everyone is, like, fire burner, like. They're all smashing it. It's amazing to see. Uh, and I think in the same in London, you know, you've got amazing eyes, like, everybody's representing, everyone's doing great work. You know, down in Stockwell, you've got Chips doing Wild Style Cafe, you know, I think he just keeps doing burners every single time he paints. Yeah. But um, you, you really need the paint, don't you? You need the paint supply. So if you've got the paint supply, you can really, like, start elevating your paint style. And I think because uh, Ecto and Stir have got the Montana hookup, because Wild Style have obviously got the paint supply, you know, it really does make a big difference. Yeah. And the same thing happened to us. So when we started to get our uh, first foot in the door with all these corporate jobs and started getting paid, you know, we just found we had loads of paint. And when we had that paint, we could really go out and start experimenting and, like, really pushing ourselves. Yeah, because I saw, like, I kind of measured it 
like growing up, there was hardly any paint about. Well, there was no paint around, and the the quality of paint wasn't good. And, no, you know we're we're living in the best time. You know the paint is incredible. Yeah, it covers so well. Yeah, and like you know, put it like the shop in in Cardiff and having the shop here, I really think it's made a big difference to like the scene in Wales. Absolutely, it's not going to affect people like Armour and them boys because they've already got that locked off. But where it's so accessible now to like the younger. Coming through. Yeah, because like you'd have the youngers coming through and they wouldn't paint so much, but you'd just be like kind of aware of them. And now like the, the people that are just getting into graph, they're painting every week, every day. Mm-hmm. And um, people are evolving a lot quicker now, aren't they? Yeah, and it's, it is about the next generation. Like if we want to keep our scene alive, we want to keep the culture going, we need to represent and bring up the next generation. You know, got to show them how to paint, show them the right way to do things and teach them about the rules of graph. Because if you break the rules of graph, you're going to find it hard. You're going to be going upstream. So it's amazing that you're doing that, you know, showing these kids how to paint. So, like, you've, like, in uh, within London, you've gone around and, like, got a load of, like, walls for, like, you know, you've created space for... That's right. ...to paint. So um, so we're based in Shoreditch, and we've always put a lot of pressure on the walls in that area, along with all the other people in my generation. But we've also gone out and, like... In, uh, intentionally try to get the permissions for locations that we can turn into legal walls. This is a place where nobody's managing it. It's totally organic. There isn't some <clears throat> advertiser or a mural agency trying to like control it. This is a totally free space for people to practice and be graffiti eyes. And Allen Gardens specifically is like, I would say, one of the best halls of fame. In Did the- you start Allen Gardens? That's right. We set it up when we were doing Nomadic Gardens and we were doing Meeting of Styles there. And we, you know, each year we tried to get a bit more space and kind of push it a bit further. And a place that, you know, 10 years ago you would get arrested for paying is now totally legal. And I would say, you know, changes every week, brand new pieces all the time, uh, really good standard of art and also space for people who aren't as good. You know, so I think that's, that's the amazing thing about these halls of fame is that actually it's for all levels. You know, there's, there's spots for burners and there's spots for people who just want to practice. SBS Salvage, South Wales' number one vehicle dismantler and car part specialist. Serving customers throughout the region for the past 10 years. You are sure to receive the very best price for your scrap or salvage vehicles. Just check out our websites, Scrap Car Cardiff, or even sbssalvage.com to get an instant online quote. We buy all cars, vans, etc. Should you need any part for your car or van, then don't hesitate to call us and our dedicated parts department will definitely be on hand to assist you. We also offer the very best prices for copper, brass, lead, aluminium and all other types of metals. Just give our friendly staff a call on 01446 421 034 Monday to Friday 9 to 5 or Saturday 9 to 1 to receive a price or come down to our depot in the rear of the unit 7 Redruff Business Park, Cardiff Road, Barry. CF 63 2QW. We also don't just buy cars and sell parts. We also sell part worn tyres at the very best prices at our depot on Robins Lane in Barry. CF 63 1QT. Call us Monday to Friday 9 to 5 on 01446 701 515 where we will assist you in any way we possibly can. Yeah, it's an amazing spot, isn't it? It's a beautiful, beautiful spot. Yeah, the whole thing, like, you know, you do the full circle, you come through the lane and mm-hmm. got the gardens and you're up into Brick Lane and stuff. And it's literally right next to Brick Lane. So, you know, you literally got all of that hubbub, all of those people uh, who are kind of drawn into the park and they're all following the art. You know, you see uh, maybe 10 street art tours a day come through. Yeah. Which, you know, you don't see that other places. You know, the street art tours thing is insane. You know, that whole industry has like grown up out of just all of us graffiti artists and street artists painting those streets, turning it into a gallery. And now there's, you know, an industry that's formed around it of people just showing, hey, look at this art, come and see this. Yeah. Yeah, we did it. Um, me and me and you were in Cam, middle of the day, going through Brick Lane, just stopped and just started putting this big WG dub up. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, it's too old stop. It was like, we'd, by the time we'd finished, we'd turn around and there's like 100 people. A whole crowd of people watching. Cameras and then to lose. It's like, wow, like, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, be, I mean, I've been painting in the street sometimes and I'm up a ladder and i got my headphones in and I'm just ignoring it and I just turn around and there's just a whole crowd 
people standing there taking photos and it's just where the hell did you come from yeah yeah that's the the main thing <clears throat> that i like about the boardwalk though in cardiff right in the city center it's like i think i counted like the one day i was there painting it's like nine different nationalities of people mm-hmm. and like these two guys they were just like chatting i'm like where are you from and they're like alaska i'm like quite busy i mean and like if you want their painting and probably never get the chance to like speak to these people mm-hmm. and like that's I, I, that's why I love it. People like frown on illegal walls. Some of them, it's too many people. Well, look, I mean, I think if you want to do a chrome piece, there's no point doing it at a legal wall. You're not you're not very gangster doing that. So why don't you take it on the street and go somewhere else and do it? But if you want to do proper wild style, and that's that's the problem with the scene in Cardiff. See, you've got people frowning on the legal walls, where it's like you said, it's a place for people to like stop, take their time. You can all go and bang a throw up, up a tag up, and but then you've got people doing chromes on the legal walls. It's like, yeah, this is like graffiti 101. It's like, take your chrome and put it on the highway, put it on the motorway. Yeah, and then it's like, okay, we're going to paint like some productions over your chrome, like, and then it's like, people are like, oh, fucking again. It's literally, yeah, the whole scene, I think, needs a lot, a lot of educating. It's a lot of people in some, in like a, in powerful positions, not powerful positions, but popular, they're popular writers. Mm-hmm. They should be doing a lot more, but to like educate and it's like, oh, if if he does it, then it's okay. Yeah, it's like now you're causing a whole load of shit for the scene. Well, I mean, I think you know we've seen in shortage how everything you know it's constantly in a state of change and constant uh, in a state of flux. So there was a point where street art and kind of the more kind of painterly stuff was kind of more popular. And then I would say in like the last 10, 10 years, it's kind of changed and you've got more graph and more, you know, more pieces going up. Um, and I think there's a space for everybody. You know, there's got to be room for everyone to do what they're doing. Um, and, you know, we've got to find our balance, haven't you? I think that with the graph scene, everything finds its balance. Yeah. So if something's too strong at some point, then it'll kind of change and someone will take over. Do you, is there a lot of... Um... So, like, I know you don't want to talk about the politics, but is there, like, a lot of graphers going over murals and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, it feels like it's almost like an intentional kind of, uh, you know, one-upmanship. It's like if there's, like, a really good mural or a nice piece, then someone has to put their throw up or their tag right across the middle. And I'm not sure, you know, what the what the intention is or why they do that, but sometimes it feels like they just want a bit of attention. They just want you to look at their tag and yeah, feel something. Do you think they like kind of like fall back on this like oh this is street art and like you know graffiti is the more powerful? Yeah, I mean I think if you were to look at my painting in the street, you might look at it and go oh that's just street art. Well, that's just you know some comic book shit. And you know they don't know who I am or what I've done or where I've come from because you know it's not like you get like a little write up or something. So you know I get a lot of people who destroy my artwork and then I just go out and paint over it and you know rebalance everything. I think you've been happy it had for those months. Yeah, well, I think in the last few years, like I've been, I've been really lucky. Like a lot of my pieces seem to be riding a lot, so maybe it's like the people kind of understand, you know, they maybe do do a bit of research. Yeah, probably be probably because of the work you've put in to painting in that area. You've heard like you've heard your stripes and well, I hope so. But you know, as soon as you get complacent or you start thinking everything's going well, there's always going to be someone who's going to sit you on your ass. <laughs> You're just going to be like, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm hustling really hard right now to try and get new spots and kind of like keep pushing the culture, and you know I, I try really hard not to paint over anybody. Like if there's somebody on the wall already, then I just leave that wall alone. But if it's dogged or if it's messed up, then I'm like, are you are you pushing for like new spots and trying to get like the as many walls as you can? Is that like going back to like your graph mentality? Like I want. Yeah, the best I mean, the it, most. it never stops, does it? You know, you const- whenever you're walking around the town, you're always looking at walls like that's a wall, that's a wall. And you're like, you know, if I if I got organized, I could take all those spots out in one evening. You know, it's like um it's like in the Godfather, isn't it, at the end, where he like gets everything organized and then he just takes everyone out in one go. Yeah. That's the way I think. Yeah, great. Yeah, so I haven't been out for like three weekends or something like that. I've just been like mad busy and shit and but like I took the kids out for a little walk around yesterday. And I'm like, 
I'm like, as soon as I get the next day, I'm doing them all in one day. Like, it's just constantly thinking. And like, if you have a, like a little bit of a break, that's playing on your mind, isn't it? I'm not up, I'm not up, I'm not yeah. up. Yeah. And I think that maybe that is, you know, maybe that's the point. It's like, we're always trying to stay relevant. We're trying to stay on top of everything. You know, it feels like sometimes if you're not on top of it, you know, people feel like, oh, this is, it's time for take this one out. You know, one of my oldest pieces is about five years old, got taken out the other day. And, you know, I'm trying really hard not to be reactive, but it's really hard not to just immediately just be like, that piece was untouched. It was a beautiful piece. Didn't have any problems with it. Someone should take it. Yeah, it's disrespectful, isn't it? It's disrespectful, but also, you know, what, you know, how am I supposed to react to that? How am I supposed to feel? Yeah, because it depends who's done it, don't it? If there's people that should know better, then it's just blatant disrespect. If it's like some dickhead with a tag, yeah. like, what are you going to do? It's like... Exactly. But if, if it had been tagged up and if it was looking a bit tired, fair enough, but it really was looking so good. I literally walked past it with my daughter the other day and she was just like, Daddy did that one. Yeah. It's a shit, isn't it? Like, you know, especially if it's like, it's your spot. Um, it, was a, it was a virgin brick wall. Nobody had done anything on there before. I literally took out the whole massive wall. It was huge. And uh, yeah, it looked good. Yeah, it's mainly those people that should know better. Like, you know, it's just like, how are you not meant to react to that kind of shit? Exactly. Because you know exactly what you're doing. So do you want me to just take that lying down? But, you know, it's, it's energies, and it? It's energies. And, you know, I'm not chasing these situations. I'm not chasing the fuckeries. Uh, i got way more important things to be doing with my time. And I think, like, in the past, like, I feel like I've spent a lot of time, like, fixing pieces and trying to, like, you know, maintain my pieces. And now I'm kind of a bit more relaxed about it. But at the same time, I'm constantly pushing for new walls. And that's more important to me is, like, what new spots can we take? What what else can we do? And, like, how big can we go? You know, because I'm paying faster and quicker and more determined and more confident than I ever have been. So I feel like I have to, like, direct that energy in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you can, like, you know, document everything you've done and, Oh yeah, you know, baby years to come. Nice book, nice book coffee out. table book. Yeah, yeah. we're sold out. That's it. Egg could probably churn one out every year. You know, yeah, he could do one every year. Can <laughs> stir. Wow, unbelievable. So, like, what's your plans for the future? Uh, well, like I say, like I really want to try and bring stuff back to Wales. I really want to like try and support the projects that are happening here, but also kind of initiate some more things and more more events. And you know, really like bring a spotlight to Wales because I feel like it needs it. Uh, you know some of these concrete walls need to change colours and uh, we've got the artists we've got people who will come to this country and like bring their energy um, I think that's super important um, I'm really happy with everything else that's like going on in my life I've got a really beautiful little daughter who's having a great time bringing her up ah, and I'm just going to put all my energy into bringing her up to be the best person I can be and then at the same time just try and keep my career going you know Keep keep surviving, yeah. Which is what it's about sometimes, isn't it? Just surviving, yeah. Like no particular plan as long as I'm, as long as I'm creating and I'm having a good time and I'm seeing my friends. Yeah, amazing, bro. Well, like like I said, like you know, working with you guys last week, it was amazing. I had a really good time, and more, most importantly, like I got inspired from it. Oh, good. I'm ready to push on now, like. Yeah, well, I mean, the possibilities are endless. You know, we just need a little bit of money and a little bit of the right direction. And yeah, yeah. Well, I'm like looking forward to like coming back and putting your energy into Wales. And yeah, yeah. Well, let's go to Port Talbot and paint some of those walls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That gotta be done. It's gotta be done. And Barry as well. I really like 2025. I really want to do a street art, uh, graffiti festival here. Yeah, absolutely. Because we're <clears throat> we're on the cusp of it now. Like you know. I think, um, you know, you need something to kind of, you know, plant the flag and be like, you know, we exist. We're making this shit happen. Yeah. Barry's a great place to do it. It's got so many gable ends and so many good walls. Yeah. I want to do it from like Birdcage Walk up to like the Ship Hill, mm -hmm. down past the Ship Hill and then onto Barry Island. Amazing. Now the whole front of Barry Island all under the promenade, like decked out with like hoardings and mm -hmm. stuff. And, you know, they just need to give us the walls and be like, come on. Yeah. Pass it over. Yeah, just let us do it and uh, be amazing. Actually. It'll be amazing. I mean, I think um, 
I think I'd love to go to the countryside. I'd love to go to like little towns in the middle of Wales and just like drop a piece of art, see what people think. Yeah, well, we'd be doing a lot of that with um, uh, an organisation called The Holder. Mm -hmm. That's run by my friends Eugene, Steve and Joe. Amazing boys, just purely out for the hip hop. But what they do, they all just go to like places like Bryn Mawr mm. and um, Tradiga. Yeah, yeah. And just drop these like little hip hop festivals. Right. Like, yeah, just yeah. just like one day events. And they'll get like uh, permission for like the town centre and they are hoarding it all out. And then like, you know, imagine just like places like Tradiga, Bryn Mawr, just get out one day. And there's people like graphing, breaking, DJing. Mm -hmm. And those kids will see that and they'll just be like, whoa, there's like a whole other culture out there which I had no idea about. Yeah. And that's what it's about, isn't it? It's like opening up their minds and kind of showing people like there is an alternative to all of the bullshit that's out there right now. Yeah, All of the stuff on the news, you can ignore that and you can look over here because hip-hop is the answer. Graffiti, breakdancing, skateboarding, that is a better culture. And people who do those things are much happier people. 100%. Yeah, I really like I've been really enjoying doing them pop ups because it's like, who would ever see graph here? Absolutely, you know. Because, but then hopefully, like it's all planting seeds, isn't it? Like hopefully, there's going to be some kid from Bryn Mawr in years to come. Just one, one to look. It's gone on. Oh, yeah, and I remember like I started because I saw you graphing that one day, you know. And he goes on to be some international artist traveling the world from Wales, representing. That's what's. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I feel like with graffiti, we have so much to overcome because there's been so much negative propaganda against the culture. You know, it's like, that's just crime, that's just gangs. It's not true, okay? Doing graffiti is like a really human thing. It's something that we've got inside us that we've got to get out. If you look up, like, cave paintings, like, go right the way back. Those people, they just had to put some stuff on the walls. And that's all graffiti artists are doing. They're putting stuff on walls. And they're talking to people through their artwork. And we have so much to overcome before we even get on a level playing field with any of the other art cultures. You know, if you look at graffiti and street art, it's like the biggest art culture in the world. Ever. It, ever. It happens in every single country by different people, by different generations. Yeah. It's huge. And if you were to put it all together, it would be way bigger than the art world or pop art or any of that stuff. Those were like little, they were like five years and then they stopped doing that shit. Graffiti and street art has been going, what, since the 60s, 70s? You know, that's like generations of people doing graffiti and street art. So it's actually way bigger than any other art form. But why isn't it in museums? Why isn't it in the galleries? You know, why are we not seeing it everywhere? Because it's being suppressed, it's being kept down. You know, there's like an intentional kind of, you know, suppression of art form. I was speaking to a, a guy recently, he's a tattoo artist, and he kind of keeps his eye on graph. But he said, like... Look, I think like graffiti writers in like the, in like say twenty years time are going to be like today's rock stars. I mean, I feel like they already are the rock stars. Yeah, you, know, you see some of these guys, and they are the rock stars. You see Tristan Ian come to town, and he is a rock star. All of these artists in America, they're treated like rock stars, but for some reason in this country, we're not treating people the way they should be treated. No, no, I know. Can you imagine like? rocking up anywhere and being like Sabre or Revark <laughs> or something like that. They're just like institutions, aren't they? They're just yeah. like... But, you know, but you are like those guys to these kids in the valleys or whoever that you're kind of inspiring. Like, that's you. You are that person. And or the Sabre. <laughs> well, yeah, I didn't think of it like you're, that. You're being humble, but, you know, you've affected so many kids' lives and they're looking up to you like, wow, this guy is about the cool graffiti. Well, we get like kids who that come here with their parents when the shop's open and they don't even want to buy paint. They just want to meet me or Cam. That's amazing. And it's just like, it's it's weird. But like, you know, the one kid come in and he was just there like looking at me and he's with his mum and she's like, oh, you're like, you're this hero and amazing. he watches all your podcasts on a Tuesday night, but we got to watch him with him because it might be a bit of swearing. And then I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, so it's just like, but it's great. It's like, life changing isn't it so like I have that through graphs yeah like I always got like the time of day for people like so yeah. you're fucking brilliant but the, just the possibility to like inspire people in that way to kind of even even if we can just steer somebody away from you know getting a 9 to 5 and just say you know you could have a career doing graffiti I know it's totally crazy 
and your parents are going to hear it, actually it is possible. Yeah. You know, and that's, you know, when I started out, everybody, my parents, everybody was just like, this isn't, you know, how are you going to be an artist? How are you going to survive? And I was just like, I'm so determined, I'm just going to do it. And when I was in school, I used to get bullied for being an artist. You know, I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to be an artist. And they got bullied because of it. And so that kind of made me more determined. It made me want to do it even more. And so now in the position I am, I'm kind of like, I want to make sure that people don't get bullied for that shit and show that it is a possibility that you can be an artist. Yeah, it's like when I went to college and tried incorporating graffiti into all my work, they're just like, nah, you can't do this. You've got to, you've got to like fucking sketch this bars with a piece of charcoal. I'm like, That's it. I'm out on the weekend spraying like huge fucking yeah. pieces of artwork like in places where I shouldn't be. I'm like, you know. And if you want to inspire kids, you know, it's not going to be like, here, do this watercolour challenge. It's like, should we do some letters? You know, like that's really going to inspire the kids. That's what gets them into art in the first place. Yeah. Like we need a total like rejig of the art industry and the art uh, education system because actually if you want to inspire the kids, just show them a copy of Star Wars or Spray Can Art and they'll be they'll be hooked. Yeah. Like sometimes we get like groups of kids here and like they're a bit rowdy at first and then like we're setting up and mm. cams on the back with the spray cans and they're still a little bit rowdy but then as soon as he starts going and marking that shit up, so, silence. Yeah, and then you're like looking and then the ones that'll start talking, you're like, yeah, right, okay. But these three here... Yeah. They're just like, and then when that outline goes on, they're just like, this is like, you know, we've got a good good bunch that have come from the workshops, you know. We've worked with so many kids, but we've got like, and like I said it before, when I was speaking to Keller, it's nice because you see these kids, they go away and they've picked their tags. So like, there's like a young kid now, Rain. I'm like, right, he's going to be a writer, definitely. And now you're like, you're driving around Barry, you're like, well, fuck, you know, it's just fucking rain tags everywhere. But it's fucking amazing, like. Yeah, yeah, as long as he's getting the good spots. On. Oh, he's getting the spots for days, like, yeah. Brilliant. Well, Jim, man, thanks for coming. Dude, it's been a pleasure. And, like, nice to see you and Matilda. Thanks for last week. Great to see you guys. And Hey, we always want to come to Cardiff and we always want to paint. Welcome anytime. We've always got you, man. Cheers, bro. Thanks, man. Thanks.